All right, hey everybody, welcome back. We are going to be covering the MySQL database now. So with MySQL, it's a pretty standard database. Everybody uses it. Um, personally, I like Postgres, but that's on me. Um, but we're going to go ahead and cover MySQL using something that I've written to make it a little bit easier on you guys to understand. So in order to get that rolling, we're actually going to download a few resources to get started. And I actually have a majority of them already uh, loaded over here. So I'm going to go ahead and drag these into view here. So one of the first things that we're going to get is called Uniform Server. This is a really simple way to run a very minimalistic MySQL database on Windows. This requires nothing and it's great for as a little learning utility because all you do is just download the file, extract it on your desktop, and run it. It's really great. So we're going to download that, and we're going to go ahead and just extract it onto my desktop just like that. And there we go. And we're going to go ahead and run that. So if I go over here to the Uniserver Z, you'll see an exe inside of here and we're going to run that and it's going to say hey we want you to set a root password please set one i'm going to set mine to abc123 and then i'm just going to hit okay i don't recommend that obviously but it is what it is and the next thing we're going to do we're going to start apache okay and it's going to pop up some windows and test pages and all that good stuff and then if we hit start mysql it will go ahead and start MySQL. Now, if you notice, there's something very specific about this little window. If we hit PHP MyAdmin, it will bring up a very easy to use interface for MySQL. So ignore all of this stuff that's over here on the left. We're not gonna be really using any of that. One of the first things we're gonna do is we're just gonna go and hit new. We're gonna go ahead and type in Alt-V and hit create. We're not going to make any tables or do anything else with this Alt-V database right this moment. So we can now kind of minimize this out or close this out or do whatever you need to do. You can always find your uh, application down here in the desktop. And if you close it, you'll find it in your taskbar. Usually it doesn't look like it actually made its way in here, which is interesting because it used to do that. So let's just run it again. All right. So it looks like it's running. Anyway, um, okay, so we'll just minimize that for now. Oh, that's why you just minimize it and it goes to the tray. Anyway, <laughs> so let's go ahead and grab this Postgres wrapper for Alt-V. This is something that I wrote that'll make your database management incredibly easy. And we can use it with MySQL and various other databases like Postgres. Um, but we're gonna use my for MySQL. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in a relatively simple way. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna copy this link, and then we're gonna go back to Visual Studio Code, and we're gonna go ahead and set up our package.json. So if we do npm init, and then we're just gonna hold down enter basically until everything is okay. <laughs> we don't need to fill this out because we're not publishing anything anyway. And we're going to install two things. The first one, npm install type ORM. And then after that's installed, we will install the second thing, npm install MySQL. If you're using Postgres, it'll just be PG instead of MySQL, but we're using MySQL. So npm install MySQL. All right, great. So now we've installed both of these. We can verify it by checking our package.json. And inside we'll see that we have MySQL and type ORM inside of here. Great. So our next step is to clone that repository for the link that we just copied. So we're going to do CD resources, and then we're going to do git clone, and we're going to paste that link right there. And if I hit enter, it's going to go ahead and download that for me. Great. Now we have it downloaded. So our next step is actually, we're gonna rename this. We're gonna call this database. And if it doesn't rename for you, that means you need to close out Visual Studio Code, which is what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna minimize this. And we're gonna to go to our folder. We're gonna to go to resources. Oops, resources. We're gonna name this database, okay? And we're gonna go back to the main directory and open that back up with code. 
Okay, <clears throat> so here we are, we're back inside of code, and inside we will see the database directory now exists. So before we begin, we need to set up our server structure to load database stuff first, if that makes any sense at all. Um, the basic idea is we're going to get rid of all this code that we have already written for this entire series. And instead, we're just going to comment it out and we're going to leave it down here at the bottom. OK, and now we can begin working with our database stuff. So in order to integrate the database, we need to load it. Now, instead of loading it as a dependency like we've done before, this one requires direct interaction. So we actually need to import it directly. So that's going to involve doing import SQL from and we're going to do dot dot slash dot dot slash. So that's going to go backwards two folders. Then we're going to go to database and then we're going to do, I believe it's index. Nope, it's going to be database.mjs as you can see there. Okay. And now that we have that, we can begin configuring our database. So what does that mean? <laughs> well, we need to set up um, a few things before we really get all the intricacies of this figured out. So one thing is we're going to create a new folder inside of the server folder, and we're going to call this entities. Okay. And let's actually get rid of that entities. There we go. And new file, and then we're going to do entities.mjs. Okay. And in order to work with type ORM, we actually have to do import ORM from type ORM. Okay. And now we need to create our first table. And the beauty of this little plugin is that it will automatically create these tables for you, populate the database, and you won't have to do anything else. You can do it entirely in code and you will spend zero time inside of PHP admin modifying your tables. So we're going to do export const and we're going to call this first one account. Okay. And then we're going to do new rorm.entity schema. And then we will open it up with an object. And then this is where we're going to create our first table. So the name of this table is going to be called account. So keep that in mind. This is the name of the table or the repo. Okay. And then we're going to make some columns. So our first column is going to be the primary column. And we need to give it an integer type and it needs to be generated. So every time that we <clears throat> push something up to the database, there is an ID that comes with it. This ID will auto increment each time you push to the database, especially if that data does not exist. So now that we have that, we will do a single field here and we're going to call this discord and we're going to put type as text. And this is where we're going to store discord authentication or discord, uh, not even authentication, really. It's more user ID to be completely honest. So that's what we're going to do with that. And then we're going to make one more table and we're going to call this one player. OK, and we're going to do new RORM entity schema. Actually, let's rename this one character. So it'll kind of reflect some of the open source stuff that I'm working on. So if we do name and then we do character and then we do columns, and we do ID, primary, true, type, integer. And then we're going to do generated, true. And then down here, we're going to do a GUID. And this GUID is actually going to be linked to this ID. But we'll get to that in a bit. Um, so for this, we're actually going to use the type of text. And then down below that, we're going to do another simple column. And we're going to call this one, uh, we'll just call this one name. Well, no, we won't call it name. We'll, we'll call this one last position or we'll call this one position. Okay. And then this one, this type is going to be <clears throat> of the text type. So type text. 
and nullable is we're going to set that to true. Okay, so that means now we have two different tables that we can work with. So how do we integrate these into the server? We need to import them. So if we do import and we're going to do account and character from, we're going to do dot slash entities and then entities dot njs. Okay, so that's loading these two specific exports into this file. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create that connection. In order to create that connection, we're going to create a new instance of SQL. And to give you an idea of what this does, we are creating a direct connection to the server through this class. So this is inside of the database MJS. So we're creating a new connection and then that connection can be called from anywhere else in your file after it's been established. <clears throat> and then we can use SQL to make queries to the server, or I mean to the database. So we can do like fetch data, we can do fetch last ID. We have all this stuff already built inside with general information about what, you, what these specific things do. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and make our DB here. So we're gonna call this const DB equals new SQL. And then we're gonna go ahead and fill out the information for this. So in order to check what we need, what I like to do is I usually go back all the way to the top and I copy this bit of constructor right here, okay? And we'll go back over to server and I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it right here. So now I have a basic understanding of what this is expecting from me. So the first element or the first parameter is gonna be the database type. So this one's gonna be MySQL. Then the host, we're doing this on our local computer, so we're gonna use 127.0.0.1. Then we're gonna do the port, 3306. We're going to use the username of root. We're gonna use a password. What did we use the password on the uniform server? Do you guys remember? It's ABC123. <laughs> and then the final one is the name of the database. If you remember, we called it Alt V. So we're gonna call it Alt V here. And then the final one is the entity array. So these are the entities we need to load or the tables we need to load or to load rather. So we need to load account and character. So we're gonna do that. Account and character. Perfect. Now our database is ready to roll. And now we can implement the next little function to get it going. So if we do alt on connection complete, this is something that's gonna be called back from the database when we are successful. So we're gonna write, hooray, you connected to your database. All right, and now that we have this, we can run it. So we're gonna do alt v server. Down here at the bottom, start a database connection database connected successfully, and hooray, you connected to your database. And there we go, we've now connected to our database and we'll begin working with our database in the next tutorial. So thanks for watching on this one and I hope you learned a little bit more about working with MySQL and TypeORM. It's all there for you and we're gonna make it real easy.